hands unto the Lord and magnify his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Come on, isn't the Lord wonderful? Oh, I feel the hand of the Lord in this house tonight. Hallelujah. He is a wonderful God. Amen. The presence of God is here. I want to say how much I love your precious pastor and first lady of Antioch Central. Amen. They have been very dear friends for a long time. And I appreciate the work that they and their family are doing in the house of God. Amen. Tremendous things. What an awesome crowd tonight. Amen. I appreciate what I see is happening in this building. And I know God's going to do greater things as I spoke this morning. And uh, my wife gives her love. She wished she could have been here, but we had things going on at home. And uh, last week, a week ago, Friday night, my son and I was out of town and I had went on back to the place where we were staying and he flipped my truck, headed there. It wasn't his fault, but hit a washout in the road that he didn't see, flipped three times and it's been something else this past week. And I made mention that the enemy began getting in my mind saying, you don't need to leave. And I had to correct that because I knew that I had a word from God. And so sometimes you just got to correct the enemy. You got to speak some things that God is wanting to do in your life. And so I feel good in the house of God. And I do give honor to uh, Pastor David Wright and his precious wife and family. Amen. To Bishop and Mother Wright, I love this couple. Amen. I have one regret, and that that bishop wasn't a part of my life when I started ministry. And he has been so rich in my life and listening to messages and things that he sends out. I give honor to Bishop and Mother Wright tonight. Amen. God is so good, so powerful. Amen. I want to go to the word of the Lord tonight, and I'm going to pick up where I quit reading this morning, but we'll go to Genesis chapter 26, and we'll start with verse 23. We'll go through 29 and then pick up with verse 32. Genesis chapter 26, verse 23, and he went up from thence to Beersheba, And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am, everybody say, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And verse 25 is very important. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. And Abimelech went to him from Greer. Now let's go to verse 27. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there be now an oath between us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that thou wilt do us no hurt, As we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art, notice these words, thou art now the blessed of the Lord. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. That's what Abimelech is saying unto Isaac. We see it now that you are the blessed of the Lord. Verse 32, And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came 
and told him concerning the well which they had digged and said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba. This is very important. He called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. Now I want to talk this, this night about this. A sevenfold promise of God. A sevenfold promise of God. Can we lift our hands right now in this building and pray? Father, we ask for your spirit right now to finish the work that you have began in this service. You have ministered, you have poured out your love upon your people during worship. And we come, God, with the word tonight. And we believe uh, that there's going to be an outpouring of the mercies of God in this place. Uh, I'm praying right now, God, for your spirit, your demonstration, your word uh, to pour upon this house in the name of the Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and honor and worship. We give you love right now. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name, and you can be seated. Amen. I believe, and as I was praying today, there was a word of God that just kept coming through my spirit. That word to you tonight is the word restoration. I believe that in this place there are people who have come into this service needing a word from God. And God is saying, I will restore the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, everything I had to do, saith God, to get you to this place. I will cause restoration to flow into your life. So no matter who you are, no matter your walk with God, God has opened up this service for you that you be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, God is opening heaven in this place. And there's a word that's being spoke of restoration that is flowing in this house right now. I feel it in the name of Jesus. You can already begin to ask God, Lord, prepare me because you're about to do something great in my life right now. I want you to notice that in the word of God, the Bible said that Isaac went up to Beersheba. Now this is after the message I preached this morning, the wells that they had dug in the valley of Greer. And in them wells we found Sitton and we found Essek and we found Rehoboth. Them wells meant that there was contention and there was strife and there was hatred. Abimelech's servants that I have just read to you were the ones that were tormenting and trying to push Isaac's servants away from what God was doing in their life. To the point that I said this morning uh, that they began to dig and they called the name of that well Rehoboth. And that well meant uh, that God hath made room for us and makes us fruitful in the land. I want you to notice that there are many in this house tonight that God has made room in your life. You do not know how that God did it, but God did it. He began to let his anointing and his spirit begin to minister to you and before you know it, you become blessed blessed. You become fruitful. Your family began to prosper and things in your life began to move forward. I want to preach to you tonight that God is looking for you to find a place in their Sheba that he can bless you and anoint you and make 
promises into your life. It was Isaac that moved from that place and they went and he began to lie down. The Bible said that the Lord appeared unto him in the same night and God began to say, I am the God of Abraham thy father. He said, fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee, and I will multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. In other words, God was telling Isaac, I'm not going to let the work die. I remember what Abraham was doing and I'm going to raise the work and I'm going to bless you. I've come to tell you tonight, I thank God for the wells that Bishop and Mother Wright dug in this city. We've got to look at that and understand there's still that apostolic anointing and power of God. But I've come to tell you we cannot let the past be bygones we've got to dig some wells in this house tonight and we've got to understand that the same God that blessed this church in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s is the same God that's ready to raise up revival in the hour that I'm preaching I've come to tell somebody that we are not done we are not finished we are not a bygone product We are the children of God. We have an anointing in our lives. And God is looking for somebody to say, Hey, I'm laying here with a vision, with a promise. I've got anointing in my life. And what God has began, he will finish in the house of God. Come on, I'm tired of hearing. We're looking for new things and new products and trying to have a new method of revival. We don't need a new method. We need to get to a place where God is making room for us. And when God makes room for us, he will move us into a place where he will begin to tell us, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, does anybody believe tonight that God is ready to show up in our midst and bless us with his promises. Be seated for a moment. He dreamed this and the Lord began to speak. The first thing that Isaac did is he got up from that place. He didn't go out and begin to broadcast what God had said to him. He didn't put a billboard in the city and said, look who I am. But the Bible said that he went and he built an altar. And when he built an altar, if you study the scripture, it was the same place in Beersheba that Abraham had built an altar unto God. And he had offered seven new lambs and made a pact with the same enemy that Isaac was fighting in his day. In other words, Isaac understood, I've got to have an altar. If my daddy had an altar and it prevailed, in his life I've got to have an altar I've come to tell the church tonight that the only victories that we will have in God is a place in an altar where we understand if God said it he's the one that can do it if he made the promise to me I'm going to build an altar and I'm going to sacrifice unto the God of my salvation so he builds an altar but this is the point I want to make tonight when he built an altar something began to happen the Bible begins to tell us that when he built an altar he pitched a tent and the servants began to dig a well In the Strong's definition, Beersheba means this. It was a place in Palestine. It was a place of a well of an oath. In other words, Isaac understood that God is making the same oath with me that he made with my father. 
And I want to say this tonight. God is wanting to make the same oath with us right now that he made with Peter and James and John and Bartholomew. God is wanting to make the same oath with the church in this hour that he made with them on the day of Pentecost when the wind began to blow and clothing tongues began to appear above their head. What God is trying to tell us, I am the same as I was with Abraham. I'm the same as I was on the day of Pentecost. Come on, somebody. We just got to build our altar and we've got to realize he is the same God of the oath right now that he was then. So Isaac, he makes this place in Beersheba and he builds an altar. It's the place of an oath, but Brown Diver Briggs says it this way. He said Beersheba was the whale of a sevenfold oath. That word oath there means promises. In other words, he was the God of a sevenfold promise unto his people. In other words, when you begin to build an altar, God will show up and begin to give you a promise that man cannot give you, but only God alone. Hear me right now. Six is the number of man, but seven is the number of God. And if God is God enough to show up in our night and say, I know what you've been going through, but I'm about to give you a promise but it's not just going to be that of man it's going to be that of God I'm telling this church right now God has sent me to tell you this is not a man this is of God God is ready to bless you with a spirit of restoration but you got to get up and say hey I'm going to build my altar I'm going to have a relationship with my father I'm not going to let the enemy talk me out of my relationship with my God. I'm going to build an altar in the midst of it all. Will somebody lift their hands right now and say before the night's over, I'm going to let the enemy know I've got a sevenfold promise in my life. Here's what I like about what's happening in Isaac's life. He builds an altar, and many will pass it by by saying, it was just a vision from God, and it was just an altar. But the Bible said that the servants went out to dig a well. And later the Bible said that Isaac called the name of the well Sheba. But as I began to study... He was redigging that well. And Abraham's servants had already dug it. In other words, Isaac saying, What worked for Abraham will work for me. Now notice he digs and he builds. He's got an altar, he's got a well. And what God spoke to me was this that Isaac found his place of dominion. And any time you find your place of dominion, you're going to find your place of restoration. No matter what the enemy has spoke to you, God's going to show up and remind you tonight who he is. Notice Abimelech was tormenting him in prior scriptures. But when he built an altar, Abimelech showed up and said, We have seen one thing. We have seen that the Lord is with thee. We have seen that you are the blessed of the Lord. And I'm telling you tonight in this house that the enemy knows that you are the children of God because you have been led by the Spirit of the Lord. And when you begin to build your altar, God begins to give you relationships. 
that. It begins to bring dominion to your life. And even the enemy of your soul will begin to say they are the blessed of the Lord. Come on, somebody. God wants you to rise tonight and to say, I am blessed of the Lord. I'm not going to let the enemy shortcut me. I'm not going to let the enemy rob me of the blessings of God. I am blessed of God. I am blessed of God. I may have hardships, but I'm blessed of God. I may be sick in my body, but I'm blessed of God. I may be walking through a valley, but I'm blessed of the Lord. You may be having financial troubles, but you are blessed of the Lord. Come on, somebody. God is looking for you tonight to say, hey, I need a miracle. I'm building my altar. I know that God is in control of my life tonight. Lift your hands under the Lord all over this building. Come on, that's it right there. Whoo. I feel dominion already working in this place. Come on, I feel dominion. That God keeps echoing that word. Restoration. I'm preaching to you. Your altar is very essential to what's about to happen in your life. Because without an altar, without prayer, without that, you will have no relationship and you will have no dominion. But the enemy saying, all I can say, they are the blessed of the Lord. Come on, lift your voices in prayer one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's restoration flowing right now. There's restoration flowing right now. Come on, receive it. Some of you are hearing in your mind right now, you need a miracle in your body. And you're hearing you can be healed right now. You need to begin to claim your dominion right now. Come on, I'm not through, but I'm telling you. Go ahead and state your claim right now. I'm the blessed of the Lord. I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am delivered in the name of the Lord. Come on, state it. Come on, crack that enemy right now. This is my salvation. This is my God. Ooh. Come on. There's a cloud moving in this house right now. Come on. I said it this morning. If I can have a little more help on my monitors or my volume, please. I said it this morning. Thank you. I said it this morning. The carnal mind is enmity against God. I felt the fight a while ago. Some of you are saying, I just cannot accept that God's fixing to carry me into that dimension. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you said it. Because God is about to raise up a standard against the enemy. And something dramatic, if you'll allow it, is fixing to happen in your relationship with God. God's about to give you dominion over that carnality that's been roaring. It's a generational thing. It did not start with you. It started with your prior family. But I've come to tell you that God's about to break 
that voice of confusion and doubt. Come on, somebody. God wants to break it in this house right now. How do you know? Because I know what the scripture is fixing to tell us. Be seated for a moment. The Bible said that God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. He said, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And they shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And that nation... Whom I shall, whom they shall serve, I will judge. And afterward, they will come out with great substance. Now, notice this word. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. What God is telling Abraham, this is the land I've given you. But your children are not going to dwell here. They're going to be in Egypt for 400 years. They're going to serve them. They're going to be ruled. But after that, the fourth generation is going to come back to this place, to this land. And on the backside of a desert... God begins to speak to Moses and says, you go tell Pharaoh, you go tell the enemy that I said, let my people go. How do I do that? Just go. We know all the stuff that Moses went through, but just go. And Moses finally went, and we know the story. I ain't got time for all that. But eventually God began to lead them out. They wandered in a wilderness for 40 years. Then they went in and they went out of the promises of God. But all of a sudden, Moses goes up into the mountain. He dies. And God tells Joshua, get up. Get the priests ready. It's time. And they do all that God tells them to do. And they walk across the Jordan on dry lands. What is happening? I'll tell you what's happening. I'm the God of Abraham, thy father. And I'm going to bless you because of Abraham's sake. I can see God laughing at the enemy. Every footstep that Joshua took, he's saying, see Abraham, I'm doing what I told you I would do some 440 years ago. I've come to tell somebody, it might have been a long time since God gave you a promise, but you got to hold on because what God said he would do, he's about to do do in your life Joshua gets them all across Jericho's one AI's lost five years later here comes an old man by the name of Caleb Caleb walks up to Joshua he says Joshua I'm as strong now as I was back then you put it together he's 85 years old he said but I've got the same strength I've got the same vigor. Why? Because I remember what God said. He said he would give me that mountain. And so Joshua, give me my mountain. Somebody needs to realize that when God gives you dreams and promises, God is not a man that he can lie. But he's a God who is faithful. And he is ready. And he is willing. He's looking for somebody who still believes that's my territory that's my promise that's my provision that's what God is wanting to do in my life so it starts something and 
He's got to give Joshua his portion or Caleb his portion. Here comes another one. Here's the Benjamites. Give us of our portion. And so it goes on and he begins to divide out the land of Canaan. The Bible says in Joshua 19 and 1, the second lot came forth to Simeon, even for the tribes of the children of Simeon among their families, and their inheritance was within the inheritance. You got to see this. Their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. And they had in their inheritance Beersheba or Sheba. A long time ago, oh, granddaddy Isaac was laying in a tent and God began to speak to him and said, I'm going to bless you, son. And I'm going to do it for Abraham's sake. And here years later is old Joshua giving out the inheritance. And Simeon comes and he says, we're going to give you and your inheritance. And it's going to be within the inheritance of Judah. And the Bible said they had in their inheritance, Beersheba or Sheba. Verse 9 of 19 said, out of the portion of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon. For the part of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the inheritance of them. You know what's amazing? Judah and Simeon, they're the offspring of Isaac. That they're Jacob's children, but they're Isaac's grandchildren. And the Bible tells us we know the struggle between Rachel and Leah, but whenever Leah is having Simeon, she has him in sorrow, but she also has the son by the name of Judah. Judah, she began to cry out, I will praise thee. Another word she was saying, I'm going to praise God for what God is doing. Judah become the ones that was known as the praisers. They would praise God in the battle. They would praise God in the tough times. They were the worshipers. They knew how to get it done. When the battle was hot, it was Judah that began to sing and dance and begin to shout about everything that God was about to do. I like Judah. I liked it earlier when the praise team had us moving and we were worshiping and we were going out into battle and we were believing some great things was about to happen. Jude is always the praisers. But Simeon on the other hand is a lot of times where we walk into the house of God and we find ourselves. You know what Simeon means in the Hebrew? It means the doubtful. It means the one born of a wolf, the hungry, but yet the doubtful. It means the ones that said we're not large enough to take a large inheritance. So we got to have something small. And Joshua said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put Simeon right in the middle of Judah. Because God knows the need of a church in the last hour. And God never intended for the church to be dead, plucked up by the root. But God intended for the church to be a church of praise and exaltation under the Lamb of God. Is there anybody that still believes in praise in the house of God? Is there anybody that still believes in worship? Does anybody still believe that when I begin to praise Him... He comes and he sits in the midst of the praises of his people. 
come on somebody I wish about five or ten more would begin to join these ones and say hey we still have praise we still have a shout we still have a testimony God has been good to us That's what I'm talking about. God's church ain't a dead church. God's church ain't a plucked up church. It's a church of life. It's a church of a river that's still flowing. Come on. He dwells in the praises of his people. And they're wanting us to close our church doors and to quieten it down. I've come to tell you it's not time to quieten it down because there's still some Simeons that needs to get in the midst of praise. There's still some Simeons that need to be able to walk into the house of God and say, I didn't believe. I didn't trust him. I didn't know him. But when I got in the midst of God's people, something began to happen. God's telling me to go on. I keep moving. Be seated for a moment. So Judah was the praisers and Simeon was the doubtful and so here comes Joshua and says, I'm going to put you in the middle of Judah's portion. The Bible specifically says in verse 2 that in that portion was Sheba or Beersheba because God knew that the doubtful needs a promise. I've always said it. It's not a sin to come in and doubt. But it's a sin leaving. Saying God you never wanted to do it. The most major thing in your life. Is not believing for your brother or sister. That's why you can bear their burdens and see God do miracles. But the greatest challenge for you is to walk into a church full of praisers and say, God, what you did for them, you can do for me. That's I'm, I'm talking to you, Simeon. You've been doubting that God's about to show up on your doorstep. You've been doubting that God's about to show up in your family. You've been doubting the things that God is ready to do. But I'm here to tell you there's enough praise in this sanctuary that God is about to drown out the voice of the enemy. And when God begins to move in your life, there's a promise of God. Listen, Jesus shows up. I'm coming to a close. He shows up. He's sitting on the well curb of Sakar. I talked about it earlier in Samaria. But when he's sitting there, she walks up to him. And the contention and the hatred is so strong that Jesus said, Will you give me to drink? And she said, How be it? Thou being a Jew, asketh me a Samaritan for a drink. For thou knowest that we have no dealings with one another. The contention, the envy, the strife, the hatred. But Jesus looks at her and says, If you knew who it is that asketh drink of you, you would have asked me and I would have given thee living waters you see what Jesus did he steps into a midst of a Simeon that believed for everyone else but she was so trapped in her life that she could not believe for herself 
And Jesus said, go get thy husband. She said, I have no husband. He said, you've had five husbands. The man you're now with is not your husband. And she said, whoa, you're a prophet. Now we worship in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place to worship. So where is she going? She's going back to worship and praise. And Jesus begins to minister. And she lays down her water pot. And she goes and she gets a city to come and see a man that told her everything. What was it? It was Jesus stepping in the midst of a woman of doubt and confusion and misrepresentation. When Jesus steps in, everything is going to be different. That's why Matthew and John and Luke and others in the room with the, uh, with the women, when Jesus walks in, he reveals his hands and his side and they begin to rejoice and they begin to worship him but when Thomas come in when Thomas walks into the room or into the church he had not been in that atmosphere they were now the Judas they were excited they were exclaiming the Lord they was telling Thomas Thomas we found him and Thomas is looking and says guys I, I seen it I seen the cross I seen him lay him in the tomb I just can't accept it I can't believe it come on Thomas you got to we've already beheld him but Thomas said unless I touch him unless I feel it unless I see him I'm telling somebody it ain't wrong for you to walk in and say I'm not there yet but when Jesus walks into the room it's time for a Simeon to realize I'm in the midst of Judah and there's a God in this house who is ready to do great things in my life everyone stand right now I'm telling you change is coming into your life right now you walked in as a Thomas but you're going to leave different than you come you're going to believe saying my Lord and my God I didn't believe it when I got here but I'm a living miracle I'm a walking miracle I'm walking out in the power and the demonstration of my God come on Thomas I'm preaching to a Simeon right now I want to know is there a Judah in the house that will begin to lift up your voice in praise that there would be a time that can slip through the door and begin to feel the touch of his nail scarred hands I wonder if there's a Thomas who can slip underneath Matthew's praise and say my Lord and my God there's a well in this house there's a well of living water there's a well flowing. Come on. It's your promise. It's what God has been speaking to you. I've been struggling, preacher, with all of this sin and this disability. Come on. I'm reaching for you. You need to run to this altar. You need to get underneath the praises of the people of God. And when God begins to come, he's going to walk right to where you are, Thomas. He will walk right into your midst right now. Come on. There's somebody, somebody else in this place. God's reaching for you, sir. God's reaching for you, ma'am. God's reaching for you right now. 
He don't want you to carry on. He wants you to rise and to come close to him. Come on. There's an altar. There's an altar right now. There's an altar in the house. There's an altar. You can come to the well of your salvation. Come on, pray. Let it flow. Come on, pray, my God. Woo! Come on, Judah. Don't stop. I need some praises. And no, there's a victory coming. There's a miracle coming. There's a breakthrough coming. I need some praises. And still believe in this house. God is about to do mighty and exploit. Come on, come on, Antioch. That's an old whale right there. Come on, that's an old whale right there. Jesus, you are here. Jesus, you are here. Come on, Antioch. Let it flow. Come on, Judah. Lift him higher. Come on, Simeon. Drink out of that well which come of the living waters. Randa. Kuri mama. Kandurishata. Rakayande. Come on. That's it. Release it. Release that burden. Release that fear. Release that doubt. Touch him. Touch him. Come on. Touch him. Come on, Judah. You're just as important in this as Simon is. Come on. You're the one that goes out in the battle. You've got the praise on. Come on. That's it, Thomas. You can get your victory right now. Come on. Pray through. Pray through it. Pray through it. Pray through it. Let the word begin to sharpen you. Come on, pray. Let the that anointing begin to take away the chaff. Let that anointing begin to remove the years that the canker worm has showed up on your doorstep. Come on. There's a spirit of restoration that's flowing from the throne of God. The spirit of restoration is in this house right now. I will restore unto you the years. God. Come on. Go. Come on. Push. Come on. That's it, Judah. That's a mixture of things that's happening in this place. God's given Judah back her praise. But God's given Simeon the whale. Come on. God's given Judah back her praise. That Simeon, you're getting a whale. You're getting a whale. Come on, somebody. There's living waters that are flowing. Come on, be fruitful. Get the fruit of what's happening right now. Get the fruit of what God's doing in your life. Come on, get the fruit. Get the fruit of what God's doing. Come on, let that fruit, let the fruit begin to manifest. Let joy begin to take place in your life. Come on, let meekness begin to usher in. Woo! 
my God, Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Hey, yes, yes. Come on, that's it. Come on, we're apostolic, not just in doctrine, but in demonstration. Come on, I said we're apostolic, not only in doctrine, but in demonstration. You're, you're taking some things, some territory back right now. Woo! Pray in the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith. Come on, pray. Come on, let it flow. Come on, let it flow. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. My God, come on, let it flow. Hallelujah. Come on, flow, Antioch. Come on, flow. You know what I'm talking about. You've been trained. Flow right now. Just flow in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Woo. Oh, my God. There's whales of living water there's wells of living water they're springing up in this place right now hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus 
Come on, Judah. Keep pushing on Simeon. Come on, keep pushing on Simeon. Keep believing for Simeon right now. Woo! Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Judah. You got to help Thomas out right now. Because Jesus is fixing to walk into the room. When Jesus walks into the room, it's all going to be different. Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have felt the moving of the post of the house of God. I've seen the elders move in this place tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I love you, Chief.